Hello everyone, I'm Terry Duke and welcome to my channel. For several months now, I've been getting requests to review all kinds of mods from Mountain Blade Warband. But one mod that has been recommended to me several times and that I never tried until now is Viking Conquest. And the reason is that Viking Conquest is not technically a mod, but a paid DLC. So for this video, I decided to actually buy Viking Conquest and play it for some time so I can tell you whether this is worth it or not. If you enjoyed this video, or find it useful, or both, you can support me with a like and subscribe. I have a whole bunch of Warband content on my channel, so if you like that game, feel free to check it out. Now, let's head into the review. So, going to Warband's store page on Steam, we can see the Viking Conquest DLC. It costs about 17 Canadian dollars compared to Warband's 22 dollars. So at full price, that's almost buying Warband all over again. But what do you get out of it? Well, Viking Conquest isn't just some random DLC. It was actually made in collaboration between Tale Worlds and the modders behind Britain Walda. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you know Britain Walda is one of my favorite Warband mods of all time. It's set in England during the Dark Ages, it adds tons of features meant to make the game more realistic and significantly more challenging. It's also one of the best known mods from Warband, and a few other mods proudly used Britain Walda as a canvas to do their own thing. So Viking Conquest isn't something we see often in any game. This is basically what happens when a game's developer offers full technical support to a modding team to take their mod to the next level. So naturally, as I review Viking Conquest, I will be comparing it to its predecessor, Britain Walda. On the surface, we get a few noticeable changes. Viking Conquest takes us not just to England, but also the coast of the Netherlands, Denmark, and Norway. So while it retains most of the map from Britain Walda, as the title suggests, we also get some Norse factions, with the proper gear that goes with it. So bigger map, more factions, and more items. The DLC also comes with slightly more polished graphics. The map is better detailed, as is the water texture. We get new skins for characters, as well as dynamic hair and a new weather system as well. Viking Conquest tends to be better looking than your average mod. Other than that, most features from Britain Walda can also be found in Viking Conquest. We have similar shield wall tactics, the troop trays have been revamped but are largely the same, and many mechanics are also available, such as stamina, bleeding, and wounds. Broadly speaking though, Viking Conquest has two main selling points, the sea gameplay and an ambitious story mode. Let's first talk about sea battles. Britain Monda had them, but it wasn't great. Viking Conquest improved upon the mechanics by making them far more stable. It's now possible to sail your ships in battle, changing directions, dropping down the sail, and boarding enemies. But for all of its appeal, I didn't find it all that great. For starters, it's not inherently better to fight at sea than fighting on land. It's more chaotic in nature, as you struggle to coordinate your ships, but at least on land, you can take advantage of the terrain, and generally speaking, you can field more troops and have far more decisive battles. But also, buying ships and repairing them is so expensive that the whole feature is barely accessible at all. Not only are ships expensive, but their capacity is limited, meaning you need several of them to travel with your whole warband. Thankfully, the game also adds the quarter feature, which can be used to leave troops on land without disbanding them when you need to travel by sea. But that also means that you travel with a limited amount of troops and sea battles can be far more dangerous. So ultimately, sea battles aren't all that cool, and most of the time, they're too expensive to even experience them at their fullest. The other main selling point is the story. I don't want to spoil it, but I'll say for me it was... okay. What's really cool about the story mode is that you make a lot of choices throughout quests that will take the story in different directions. And as in other story-driven mods, the story involves your companions a lot, and your relationship with them will impact how the story unfolds as well. So in terms of story-driven mod, it's definitely one of the strongest, better-written stories you can experience in Warband. And having multiple endings to many quests means there's a lot of replay value as well. That said, the story in of itself wasn't like super awesome or anything. The premise is decent and involves a lot of historical events, which you get to witness, but the ending for the characters was a big... average? It was very predictable, and ultimately, it was unsatisfying for me personally. So, we have a DLC that slightly improves upon an already great mod, but seafaring is okay at best, too expensive at worst, and a unique story that will keep you engaged for a solid 15 hours, but may not be all that satisfying. So the ultimate question is, is Viking Conquest worth it? To me, it depends on what you compare it to. If you compare it to native Warband, Viking Conquest is a massive upgrade. Virtually everything is improved, from battle tactics, battle size, kingdom management, introduction of sea battles, a story mode campaign, improved visuals, new items, new factions. So yeah, it adds so many things. But if you compare it to the countless mods we can get for free, that $17 price tag becomes very hard to justify. In fact, comparing it side to side with Britain Walda, what more do we get from Viking Conquest? Well, besides the already mentioned story mode, better sea battles, and the Norse factions, the changes brought to Viking Conquest are subtle. 
How about being able to bang your shell with your army? That's cool, I guess. The Siege gameplay, which is one of my favorite things from Britain Wada, is still there and largely the same. The main difference I noticed is that defending the Siege camp is much better. In Britain Wada, there was an issue with reinforcements and these battles could take forever. In Viking Conquest, the Siege camp is located on top of a hill with a single entry point, which can be defended effectively against larger forces. These battles are bigger and done much faster, so that's nice. On a different note, Viking Conquest has a completely new soundtrack, which is definitely better than Britain Walda's Dark Ages vibe. The soundtrack though is very short and it gets repetitive. Another point for Viking Conquest, it's far more stable. It must be one of the perks of having full technical support from the developer. Viking Conquest did not have any bugs, the only crashes I had was from setting battle size past what the game can handle. But what I really hate though is how difficult Viking Conquest has made it to recruit and upgrade troops. It's stupidly hard. Firstly, you can't just get the recruiting option from the village menu. For every single village you go to, you have to ask the village leader permission to recruit volunteers. And virtually every time, the only way to guarantee their approval is to bribe them with 500 peningas. So every village has a fee of 500 before you even start recruiting. Great! Also, if you have scenic view turned on in the scenings, you need to physically go to the village center to find the leader to start talking to him for every single village. But besides the villages, there's also an option to recruit troops from castles and towns, but for those you need 150 renown and at least a relationship of 5 with the ruling lord, which you can accomplish by either doing tasks for them or bribing them with jewelry, which is very expensive. Compare that to Britannwalda, you can just go to any village and recruit. That's it. There was an option to give money to the village in Britannwalda, but that was optional, and giving money actually improved your relation with the village, which meant you could do it several times to keep recruiting, and as the relationship keeps improving, you get more, better recruits. To me, this is a perfect example of fixing something that wasn't even broken, and it became painfully clear during my story mode, when I had to recruit more soldiers because they kept dying in a siege. The whole process was painfully slow, I would barely get any recruits from villages at all, and the cost was ridiculous. Now granted, I started a sandbox campaign and reduced the difficulty for recruiting and upgrading, and I did notice the difference, but even then, the way to recruit in Brenton Walda was perfectly fine, why make it more difficult for no reason, and then put a price tag behind it? And those are the main differences between Brenton Walda and Viking Conquest. So once again I ask, is Viking Conquest worth it? And my answer is, not really. From native to Viking Conquest, it's a massive upgrade for sure, but from free Britain Walda and countless other mods to a glorified mod that costs nearly as much as the base game? What it is, is a very stable total conversion that brings a solid story mod and sea battles, but neither are big enough deals for me personally to pay $18 for it when there's so many other options for free. I spent hundreds of hours playing free mods that gave me unique experiences, and going back to them after playing Viking Conquest, I don't think I'm gonna find these free mods to lack in anything that Viking Conquest exclusively provided. Does that mean you should not buy the DLC at all? Well, there is a reason for me personally that I think if you can afford it, you should still consider it. And simply put, it's to support the modders. If there's one thing working on my YouTube channel made me realize, it's that there is a huge community of passionate gamers who take the time to make mods for games with no other intentions than to bring a new experience to players. Developers have an incentive to make games, they sell them, but the vast majority of modders never get paid for all the work they put into creating amazing mods. Britain Walda, without a doubt, took a long time to make, and I spent at least 300 hours playing it, so I'm glad they were able to tame up with Tail Worlds to turn Britain Walda into something even bigger. So to me, buying Viking Conquest is my way to show support. I may not find its changes are worth the price in itself, but it's nonetheless an improvement upon Britain Walda, so I thought I'll be going back to it when I now have Viking Conquest. And ideally, broadly speaking, I think we should all make an effort to show more appreciation to modders. That's why some of them have Patreon pages, or why Nexus Mods is an option to send tips. The only thing that bothers me is I want my money spent on Viking Conquest to go predominantly to the modders. But a few years ago, they had an AMA on Reddit, and someone asked them if they were making money from the sale of the DLC, to which they replied they could not share that information. So whether or not I'm supporting them as much as I want by buying the DLC, I'll never know. So to recap, if you were hoping for a mod that's way up there compared to other mods, I don't think Viking Conquest really offers that, and I don't think the price is worth it. When on sale though, it's definitely more reasonable. If however, you loved Britain Walda and want to experience it on a higher level, while simultaneously supporting the modders for all their hard work, then I can't think of a better way than to buy Viking Conquest. And that's about it for today. 
Thanks for watching everyone! If you found this review helpful, you can show some support with a like and subscribe. I have a lot of Warband content on my channel, with more Bannerlord content on the way, so feel free to check it out. Also join the Discord server, link in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time!